Geçtiğimiz yıl Max Verstappen'le bir röportaj yapmıştık. Bu yılda Checo Perez'le bir röportaj yaptık. Aslında bu uzun süreli bir planlama süreci şeklinde gelişti Mobil Türkiye ile. Çok teşekkür ediyorum kendilerine. Yüz yüze olmasını bekliyorduk bir röportajın bir noktada ancak Covid şartları yüzünden yüz yüze olamadık. Hafta sonu boyunca Espor ekibiyle birlikteydim piste. İşte yayınlara katıldım ve... E- Hemen yayının bittikten sonra Çeko ile röportaj yapmak için apar topar pistin sessiz bir köşesini buldum. Perşembe biraz daha müsaitti. İşte telefondan internetimi açtım. O yüzden beni her zamanki ortamda görmeyeceksiniz bu röportajı yaparken. İşin tuhaf tarafı bu röportajı yaparken Çeko'dan sadece 50 metre uzaktaydım. O yüzden aramızda ilginçte bir muhabbet döndü. İyi seyirler diliyorum size. Uh, so Çeko, welcome to Turkey. Last year I interviewed your teammate Max here. And today I saw them and I greeted them and, and I took a picture with him. I told him I interviewed with you, mate. And right now I'm like 100 meters away from you. And just uh, from the beginning, I'm going to ask you after I finish this, can I come to the motorhome and can we take a picture after we finish? Is it possible? It's no problem. Okay. I'm awesome. for you. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you, man. So the Turkish fans like you a lot. You know why? Because last year when you were doing these great races, Uh, at racing point and at some point in the season it seemed like you had no drive in the formula one no seat and i did this video and everybody thought that you should really go to red bull actually my question is this did you feel pressure at that time thinking that you have no seat after doing so well for so many years in formula one proving yourself and did you feel that uh, some people in formula one maybe underrated you Mm, no, I think it was a unique situation. I also feel like, uh, I mean, there's always pressure in, in this business because as a driver, you're not thinking about whether you have a contract or not or that kind of thing. You you just here to win, to to to be able to go home happy and, and enjoy um, your your days at work, you know. And for that, you you have to make sure you maximize your your opportunities. So related to that, people always think that when you guys make a mistake, a rare mistake, they think that you are bothered by outside issues, like personal problems, or maybe sometimes like performance pressures. The pressures you feel outside of well, the car. We, we live under an immense amount of pressure, you know, uh, we have to deliver every single day. And, and that's the same for everyone, you know, who works in Formula One, you are at the highest level of the sport and you have to deliver at every single day you know and you are able you have to deliver on track off track um, at a very high level so you never think about outside stuff while you are driving it never comes to your mind no okay i don't let my outside life affect the the, the racing in any way you know? okay so this has been asked to you like many times early in the season But how do you feel with your new car? It's been almost two thirds of the season. And what did you have to adjust the most in your driving, in terms of you, your driving to adapt to the Red Bull car? Um, well, it's quite a different track, a different car, you know. Um, and the way I brake, the way I accelerate, the way I manipulate the car with the steering wheel is quite different, you know. And, and uh, yeah, that's something that um, I'm conscious of it. Uh, I'm probably not at my 100% with the car, but I'm pretty much there. And, and, and uh, I, I just know that I have to take the most out of, of it. And, and yeah, just next year, the roads are changing massively. But for, for now, we have a, a championship to win. So uh, I have to be on it every single weekend. So since you first said breaking, I'm going to take breaking as the answer to that. <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Simple, simple answer, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, you have this super unique talent of um, preserving race tires, you know. We have this saying in Turkey that Checo is going to take these tires to the next Grand Prix. He's so good with the tires, he can drive them for two races or something. And I'm sure a lot of young guys are trying to emulate you. What is the secret to this? Do you have any secrets? Or is it just natural yeah, driving? I- No, I think it's something that you can constantly work with your engine. You know, when you come to the race weekend, you have to understand where the deck is going to come from and uh, see what, how you can manipulate that to be to be a bit better, you know, and get the most out of it. Uh, 
and that will be the key to it. In the past, race car drivers usually build their first cars. I don't know if you are into some similar things like building your own car or stuff. Are you a mechanic as a hobby, maybe? Um, no, but I'm a, a father, you know, I, I've got two kids, so they keep me pretty busy. So I'm constantly doing their scooters, their, mm -hmm. uh, their car for, for kids, that kind of thing. Okay, in the past, the question is this, in the past, the, the, the older race car drivers, I mean, the, the guys from 60s, 70s, they usually built their first race car on their own. In today's Formula One, is it uh, like um, the drivers have less effect on developing the car because the cars are so much more complicated than so much more, let's say, engineering reliant, would you say? Um... I see, I see, I see where you're coming from. I think yes, the driver has less influence to to develop the car or to to to change the car than than what it used to be before. You know, because right now they they do a car and every car has a map, error map, where it works. You know, if you go out of that map, the car doesn't work. You know, so yeah, I'd say that uh, having good engineers like Adrian Newey is key. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Adrian Newby is a legend. So about the track, uh, this track is quite unique. It was much more difficult when it was first launched back in 2005. But I will say it's a front limited track and uh, will be kind of heavy on front tires, I think. And uh, But yeah. last year, the, the situation wasn't ideal. There was super low grip on the track. So can I take your quick analysis about the track? Yeah, I think it's a good track, but it's really the tarmac is the biggest thing of, of the of the weekend. How rough it's gonna be compared to last year and, and see how the grip level is, you know, compared to last year. That will be the key to it. Okay, do you have anything specific to say about the track? For example, I like turn four when you go downhill and the for the entry is blind as well. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool, cool place, you know, a lot of straights, a lot of braking. Definitely a very good cool place, um, a very enjoyable one. Okay, this this this question your teammate dodged so, I don't know, in a cool way. The question was, which legend from the Formula One past? I mean, you can pick any time period. Would you like to race against, compete against? Max said, I want to race against my father. So, so he kind uh, of dodged it, yeah. Um, well, my father, my father, yeah, obviously, I will also, my, my father was also a driver, he didn't make it in Formula One, but uh, I uh, like to race with Ayrton Senna, okay. and I think he was really good, but I, I have to say in this era, I really admire the driver, the level that we have currently in Formula One, um, I think it's definitely one of the highest ever in, in the sport. The question is, I think I'm done with questions, Checo, you were quite clear with them, but... Uh... People like you here, like feel like you. For some reason, you're their favorite driver on the grid because it's probably because people like the way you drove last year. Like in a way, there is no tomorrow, and then you got uh, to a great seat on the grid. People like you a lot here. What's what's your message to them? Especially people on my channel love you a lot. Oh, yeah. thanks, thanks to all the fans. I really hope to meet them. At some point, and, and yeah, I, I really hope that I can make them proud, you know. And I'm always driving like there is no tomorrow. Uh, I just have had a bad run of races, but I, I really look forward to be back on the top step in, in Istanbul. Okay, thank you, man, for these clean answers. And I'm gonna I'm gonna come and visit you after I'm uh, done interviewing Sean. Is that okay? To take okay, a picture. I okay. You, man. Okay, I'm going to be there in 15 minutes or so. Okay, thank you man. Thank you Checo. Gerçekten de röportajdan sonra Red Bull motor omuna gittim ve Checo kapıya çıktı. Bir dakika içinde kapıya çıktı. Bekle geliyorum dedi. Ancak sonra 5 dakika sonra üzerinde Red Bull'un yeni Honda'yı 
anma amacıyla yaptığı tasarımı biliyorsunuz otomobilde de kullanılır tulumda da vardı onunla birlikte dışarı çıktı. Ve çekime doğru gidiyormuş meğersem o zaman bilmiyorum lansmanı varmış bunun herhalde takvimini unuttu biraz. Aslında bu tulumla fotoğraf çektirmemesi gerekiyordu ve bana bu tulumla fotoğraf çekemeyiz dedi ama sonra kıyamadı herhalde tulumla birlikte fotoğraf çektik. Ben de lansman çıktıktan sonra internette bu fotoğrafı paylaştım. Centilmenlik olsun bir şeyi e, aşmış olmayalım ve Çeko'nun başını belaya sokmayalım diye. Çeko gerçekten de... <gülüyor> Röportajda da konuştuğumuz gibi yarın yokmuş gibi sürdü. Hamilton'a karşı müthiş bir savunma yaptı ve son yarışlarda kötü gidişine son diyerek Red Bull için son derece kritik puanlar aldı. Şimdi mobilin yağ mühendisi Şan'dan mutlu olan röportajı izleyeceksiniz. Şan'la geçtiğimiz yıl yüzde konuşamamıştık. İnternet bağlantısı problemleri yüzünden garajdaki ve bir video kaydı atmıştı. Bu sefer daha rahatlı şanlı olan sohbet. Ee, çok da tatlı bir insan bu arada kendisi. Ancak çok fazla arka plan sesi vardı. Çünkü Max, Checo ve Alex Albon birlikte orada bir play seat kurmuşlar ve oyun oynuyorlar. Yani ciddi bir simülatör değil de onların sesleri ve bağırışları da geliyor arkadan. Maalesef bu kamera kalitesi çok iyi değil bu. E, röportajlarda ama bu tabii benden kaynaklı olan bir şey değil karşı taraftan kaynaklanan bir şey biz işte YouTube'da video yapanlar kadar bu işi önemsemiyorlar diye düşünüyorum ne kadar kaliteli çıkmış sesleri ne kadar iyi gitmiş çok da umurlarında değil bence. So, around France GP at Paul Ricard there was this article published uh, saying that Exxon Mobil has developed a secret formula uh, to uh, using a cosmetic chemical to improve performance and the reliability of Honda engine. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, how does innovation happen when it comes to engine oil? That's, I mean, high performance engine oil, Formula One oil. Yeah, so um, ExxonMobil's research engineering looks at a massive array of different chemicals and um, different chemistries that work in engine oils. Obviously, it's our the bread and butter industry. We are a lubricant supplier. Mobile One is one of the, the largest brands in the world when it comes to sort of lubrication of cars and sort of commercial vehicles. Um, and we are very lucky that we have a very strong technical partnership with Honda. Um, we send them numerous different chemistries of oil each year, which they can actually test on their dyno systems in uh, Japan. And we get feedback from them really quick. Yeah. So it allows us to, to make up lots of different chemistries, lots of different blends, using a whole array of different components to work out exactly what works. And, and by having that, it allows us to use unorthodox um, chemicals and orthodox chemistries. Um, we have the facilities at age that we have a, a lab So we can look at things like the metal content of the oil, and from that we can then feedback to the team how maybe how much the engine is wearing down, and um, compared to sort of different oils, they will then know how hard they can push the engine. The engine development stops in Formula One. How does it affect your development of the? I mean, the development of the racing oil doesn't stop. I think. Um, so, so exactly. So we're in this sort of slightly unfortunate position where um, 2022, the uh, engine oil and the fuel falls under the homologation of the of the engine. Mm -hmm. So, where in recent years we are allowed to bring one upgrade of fuel and oil each year to the mm -hmm. So we actually make one upgrade, um, like the teams come with their engines. But from March 2022, we have to establish a fuel and an oil that we're happy to take right through till 2025, when the engine regulations change again. And obviously, there's a big challenge for us. Obviously, we're going to the E10 fuel next ten year, which is a, a, a big move for the current fuel. There's lots of different performance aspects to consider with that new engine. It, it may be the same engine, but the way it reacts to the, the, the fuel for next year is different. So we're doing a lot of developmental work with Honda in Japan, trying to line up the best fuel fuel on package that we can, and with that, the oil. E26 is going to be a massive year for. Mm -hmm. Not only are they going to be the new engines, but we're going to be moving to a fully sustainable fuel um, with a, a net carbon, uh, a net zero carbon carbon emissions. And that is a massive challenge for lots of the technology that's going to go into that fuel isn't necessarily established. And so we're going to need that three or four years between when we aren't necessarily allowed to upgrade the fuel and, and then 2026 when there's going to be a massive upgrade. So there's going to be a lot of work going on behind the scenes at ExxonMobil coming up with that new fully synthetic fuel. So, so, so you are going to spend your time preparing for yeah. the 26 season, so, yeah? So we won't be allowed to bring any new fuels to the track between. But the development will continue on the background. Yeah, behind the scenes in the. Yeah, in, awesome. In, yeah, in ExxonMobil research industry, there'll be a huge amount, a huge amount of work because every fuel supply will be under 
pressure to come up with that with the, with the best and fuel. It almost resets everything. Everyone's starting from the same same starting blocks. So yeah, it's an exciting time. That that's always exciting when the technology changes, the engines change. And I think 2026 will be very important in that aspect. So you said you had the right to bring one update for fuel and the oil, right? Throughout the season. Yeah. Uh, but about uh, adapting to different tracks every year. I mean, every track has a different demand, I think, because some tracks are more problematic in terms of cooling. Some are easier to cool the engine, probably. How does it work exactly? Yeah, exactly. So, as I say, we are limited to only one upgrade. So, we can't actually bring a complete different oil to each and track. We can't modify it. Um, before we bring a new oil to a race, we have to declare it to the FIA. Um, they have to pre approve that. And then, when we bring that to the actual race circuit, they can then test it from the car to match it against our pre declared sample to check we haven't adulterated it, changed it, added anything to it. So, it's very, very con Con control. So, although we may like to maybe adapt something for different races, uh, it's not possible. So, as you as you said, maybe in Mexico where it's a higher altitude, or in Monza where it's a particularly high power amount, that you may want to adapt things. Um, but yeah, that's that's not something we can do. And again, that's an extra challenge for an oil supplier. We have to make sure that the oil that we provide can cope with the different demands of every different track. So right from you're looking at Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi, where you're looking at kind of just um, sort of, uh, climate conditions of, sort of 30 degrees with engine temperatures going sort of way up to 300 degrees and above. And then you're looking at Silverstone, a cold Silverstone day in, June, uh, in the UK, where kind of uh, conditions may be kind of 15, 16 degrees. And our, and our, all of our oils and water have to perform at every single event. And that's something that when right from the developmental stage of like from a stage where we, we're making up the design of the uh, oil with where i'm looking at so the, i'm done with my questions it was so nice to meet you to to finally meet you face to face <laughs> not just uh, translate the, the, the video recording you've made but if you need anything else come back to us and uh, we can do it remotely anyway I, I suppose so so yeah okay okay nice to meet you man hope you enjoyed it and yeah, yeah. thank you thank you yeah yeah, yeah bye bye Başka videolarda görüşmek üzere. Umarım Formula 1 ve Türkiye arasındaki bağlar güçlenir. Biz de sadece ben değil birçok insan bu tip şeyleri yapar ve internette paylaşır diye düşünüyorum. Ben açıkçası Çeko'nun yanıtlarını son derece dürüst bulduğum bir Formula 1 pilotu için. Zaten genelde açık sözlüdür basın toplantılarında. Siz de yorumlarda görüşlerinizi belirtirsiniz. Başka videolarda görüşmek üzere. Kendinize çok iyi bakın.